Hi everyone, welcome back to Chemistry. In this video, we're going to take a quick detour and talk about section 3.3 in our textbook, which is all about temperature conversions. So last uh, lecture, we you saw this slide and we talked about how we measure temperature in the metric system versus the SI system. Um, we also noted that uh, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, also freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So what you'll notice is that there's a the difference between there's a difference of 100 degrees Celsius um, between where water freezes and where it boils on the Celsius scale and then 180 degrees Fahrenheit between where water freezes on the Fahrenheit scale and boils on the Fahrenheit scale. And what's really cool is that um, we can use those numbers to create a mathematical equation that allows us to convert between different temperature scales because we will often be doing that in chemistry. Okay, and then we also mentioned that the, in the Kelvin scale, the lowest temperature possible, the, sorry, that the Kelvin scale begins at the lowest temperature possible, which is zero degrees Kelvin. And we also call that absolute zero. The reason that we call that absolute zero is that scientists learned that the coldest temperature possible is actually negative 273 degrees Celsius. So they said, hey, let's simplify that a little bit by creating a temperature scale uh, that actually starts at that lowest coldest temperature. And let's say that that's the Kelvin scale. So they called that coldest temperature absolute zero because that's the coldest temperature you can get. And we made a scale for it that starts at that temperature. So that would be zero Kelvin. So we also said that units uh, for Kelvin are is just like a capital K. And then there's no degree symbol in front of the K. Um, we now know that there's no negative temperatures on the Kelvin scale. And the Kelvin scale has the same size units as the um, units for Celsius. So one Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius. Okay, so here's just a graphic of how uh, the Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin temperature scales differ um, in regards to freezing and boiling points of water. Okay, so you'll notice that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, right? 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 273 Kelvin. Likewise, you'll notice that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and 373 Kelvin. Okay. You'll also notice that, um, sorry, let me get my highlighter here. The, the difference between boiling and freezing points of water is 100 degrees Celsius and 100 Kelvins. So that actually makes it mathematically easier to convert between Kelvin and Celsius. Whereas Fahrenheit is kind of weird. It's got 180 degrees Fahrenheit between freezing and boiling. Okay. Um, you don't need to like memorize that. It's just to let you know how some of these mathematical equations um, actually get created. Um, okay, so or discovered, I should say. So converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, I don't really want you to memorize anything from this slide. I just wanted to show you that, um, again, you're noticing a 100 degrees Celsius difference between freezing and boiling, 180 degrees Fahrenheit between freezing and boiling points of water. And that's how they actually get one of the numbers that you'll see, this number, in um, our equation for converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So um, that magical equation is right here. <laughs> um, so it's, let's see, let's break this down a little bit. So let me copy it over here. Tf equals 1.8 Tc plus 32. So this Tf is uh, 
stands for temperature in Fahrenheit. Okay, that's just the variable that we're using. Sometimes you might actually just see it written degrees Fahrenheit equals 1.8 degrees C plus 32. They mean the same thing, right? You're just using different variables to represent your um, numbers. Okay, um, but in on our exams, I will actually give you this equation. So um, you don't need to memorize it. I will give you that. I will also give you the equation for converting between Kelvin and Celsius. Um, and we'll get into that in a little bit here. Okay, so TC then probably stands for what? Yeah, temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and solve a temperature problem using that equation. Um, it was nice of them to write it again for us. So TF equals 1.8 TC plus 32. All right, so let's solve this problem. So the problem says um, a person with hypothermia has a body temperature of 34.8 degrees Celsius. What is that temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? So anytime um, we're solving these types of equations or, or solving any problem really in chemistry, you're going to hear me say, what are you given and where do you want to be or where do you want to go? You're going to get so tired of me saying it, but I say it every time. Um, and that's because your first step to solving any problem is to analyze the problem. What information do I have? What information do they already give me? And what information am I trying to, to get to? Where am I trying to go? What's my goal? Okay, so um, what are we given in this problem? Yeah, we're told that the person with hypothermia has a body temperature of 34.8 degrees Celsius. So right away, I know this is my TC. Okay, and then where, what am I, what do I need? What am I trying to get to? What's the whole goal? Yeah, I want temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Temp in degrees Fahrenheit. So let's call that one TF, right? Let's make this a little clearer here. Okay, so those are the two things that I have. That's what I'm uh, given and what I need. Okay, and then how am I going to get those things to connect? I'm going to use the temperature equation that I have. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. So uh, what is our TC? Yeah, it's 34.8 degrees Celsius. And we're actually solving for TF. So that's perfect because remember, whenever you're solving for a variable, you want that variable alone on one side of the equation. It doesn't really matter which side, um, but sometimes we like to see it on the left. Okay, so TF, we don't know it yet, so I'm just going to copy it, equals 1.8 times TC, which is 34.8 plus 32. All right, so now this is a matter of uh, using our PEMDAS rules, P-E-M-D-A-S. And I apologize if this is a review for you, but uh, you can kind of tune out for a sec if it is. So multiplication and division comes first in PEMDAS in our order of operations. So let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, so let's see, let me get my calculator. So 1.8 times 34, oops, 1.8 times 34.8 is 62.64. So TF equals 60, wow, that's not a 6, 62.64. And then we have our plus 32 still. So that's going to be, oops, plus 32. All right, so now we can do our uh, addition or subtraction. That's going to be 62.64 plus 32, and then we get 94.64. Okay, looking at this, I'm like, there's something missing. What is missing? What goes here? Yeah, your units. So what, what is this temperature now represented in? It's in degrees Fahrenheit. 
right? Remember, TF was solving for degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So this would be our final answer. And the thing that I'm going to be looking for on exams from here on out is that you have this, uh, exams and quizzes, is that you have that the units there. Very important in chemistry. Okay, so that's how we solve a temperature problem um, converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And you'll notice that you could actually also solve for, um, you, if you could have been given Fahrenheit, and needing to solve for Tc for degrees Celsius, right? You'd still do the same, um, you'd use the same equation, you'd just be plugging in different values and solving for a different variable, okay? So you can solve um, either way. But what about if we wanna convert from Kelvin to Celsius or Fahrenheit? Well, that's going to use a different equation. So the equation that that is going to use, and again, I will give you this on exams, is Tk equals Tc plus 273. You might be looking at this and thinking, where's Tf? Do we have degrees Fahrenheit in there? And we don't because you can actually only convert from Kelvin two degrees Celsius or vice versa. So you can be given Kelvin and you can get to Celsius or you can be given degrees Celsius and you can get to Kelvin. You can't uh, directly convert from Kelvin to uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, let me scooch this over just a little bit. So, but what you can do is you can convert from uh, actually, let's let's do this like this, just so I have more room here. Kelvin degrees Celsius. So I'm just representing those in their um, like as their abbreviated forms. Um, so what you can do is you can convert from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, and then to Kelvin. Okay. So you would have to do it kind of in two steps. You could also do it the other way around. Okay, so let's, um, oh, and I also wanted to tell you that this is temperature in Kelvin. Okay, and then we remember that Tc is temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay, whoops. Let's do this. Let's do an example. So, example. Now I'm looking at um, page 73 in your textbook. And it's a sample problem. So, the problem says, in a type of cancer treatment called thermotherapy, temperatures as high as 113 degrees Fahrenheit are used to destroy cancer cells or make them more sensitive to radiation. And then it asks, what's the temperature in degrees Celsius? And what's the temperature in Kelvin? Okay, so pause the video for a second and think about how would you solve this question? Your goal is to go from 113 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius and then to Kelvin. Okay, yeah, you have to use your um, two different equations. So for the first equation, let's do step one. We're gonna need to convert from Fahrenheit, which is what we have, to Celsius, which is what we want, because we eventually wanna use Celsius to get to Kelvin. Okay, so, we're just looking at this first yellow to blue right now. So what is our equation? Let's go back and look at it. Here's, here it is right here. So, oops, wait, no, that's the solution. Let's go up here to our equation. So our equation is Tf equals 1.8 Tc plus 32. 
So TF equals 1.8 TC plus 32. All right, so step one, what goes where? Well, I have my TF, that equals 113, right? That's this number here. I don't know TC, so that's what I'm solving for. That's my goal. Okay, so let's go ahead and you could do this a number of ways. You could plug in the numbers that you have already and solve, or you could solve for your variable that you're looking for and then plug the numbers in. I'm just gonna plug in the numbers just because I've kind of always done it that way, but you can do it either way. So let's go 113 equals 1.8 TC plus 32. Now I need to move this 32 over to get rid of it because I want that TC alone. So 113 minus 32 is 81. 81 equals, we still have that 1.8. TC is not alone, so I'm not done yet. So let me divide 1.8 on both sides. That cancels those out. And then we have 81 divided by 1.8. That gives me, did I do that right? 81, 81 divided by 1.8. 45. So TC, I'm just moving the TC over to the left and the 45 to the right. So just switching these because I just, I don't know, my brain likes to see TC, my variable on the left. So, um, and then what goes here? Units. Yeah. So my units now are degrees Celsius. So I've converted my temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. Okay, am I done? No, I'm not done yet, right? I still don't know what that is, this temperature is in Kelvin. So let's do the next part. And then I'll highlight this because we have it listed in blue here. I love color coding. Um, that's one of my biggest study tips for chemistry is to color code if you need to, if it helps you. All right, so step two, I wanna go from blue to let's say purple. Mm, yeah, purple's fine. Blue to purple. So from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So now I know this number is 45 degrees Celsius. What connects degrees Celsius and Kelvin? Yeah, the equation that we got up here, that we learned up here. So TK equals TC plus 273. All right, so we know our TC, so we can plug that one in, and then we're going to solve for what we don't know, TK. So let's go ahead and do that. So TK equals, TC is 45, right? And then plus 273. Okay, so 45 plus 273 is 318. What goes here? Kelvin, yeah. Okay, and that is our purple answer. So generally, if you, um, the, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, the general problem solving technique, again, we looked at what we were given. So we were given from this example in the textbook, we were given that we, we start with 113 degrees Fahrenheit. We said, where do we wanna go? Well, we first wanna know um, degrees Celsius, and then we wanna know degrees, or we wanna know Kelvin. And the only way to get from Fahrenheit to Kelvin is to go through Celsius. 
So we solved for Celsius first and then converted to Kelvin. Okay, so even if you wanted to, to convert from, even if you didn't need to know degrees Celsius, you'd still follow this general problem solving technique so that you can actually get from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. All right, I hope that that makes sense. If you have any questions, of course, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video.